I'm Scott Bass with Edmund Optics here for another episode of Light Talk where we break down some of the most interesting trends in the optics industry. And you could see special edition today, right? We are on site at the Optics and Photonics show hosted by SPIE in San Diego. So we're having Ooh. a great time, right? Definitely. Um, and I'm here with some of the brightest in the business, at least oh, at our shucks. company. I have uh, Corey Boone, our, let me see if I get this right, our lead technical marketing engineer. Perfect. Right? Got it. Yep. And we have Ben Weaver, a solutions engineer. That is right? correct. So you, yes. you work with customers all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. You, I know you create a lot of technical content. So exactly. I feel like I'm working with the, the, the two best people for this conversation. And you really have a feel of what's going on because you've been walking the show and you've been seeing what's going on, right? Yeah. Okay. So I've been walking the show as well. And I've been learning as much as I can. And I'm seeing this trend of ruggedization of imaging lenses. I'm hearing a lot about it, not only on the show, um, but in other, just, just over the past couple of months, it's, it's, it's been on my mind. I've been hearing a lot about it. When I think of ruggedization, I think of lumberjack kind of rugged. And I'm assuming that's not what it is. Yeah, a lot less flannel <laughs> here, but you're getting close. So can you explain what, what is ruggedization means as it relates to imaging yeah. lenses? Sure. So basically, as more and more things are becoming autonomous, uh, imaging lenses are going to more places than ever before. Think, you know, autonomous vehicles, automated agriculture equipment, something going through a farm, picking up produce. Uh, and so all these systems, they're not just in a nice, clean, maybe assembly setting anymore. So they're exposed to shocks and vibrations of all these things moving around, and also contaminants, dust, moisture, everything around them. So the ruggedization is protecting them from all these crazy conditions. Interesting. So... I'm really into space these days, space nice. travel. You hear a lot about that, right? That's been in the news and autonomous vehicles. I think of that like on busy highways, on bumpy roads. Is that the type of environments we're talking about? Definitely. And you mentioned space, which has some extra considerations too, like athermalization, because yes. you experience crazy temperature swings when you go from the burning through Earth's atmosphere to the cold of space. If you're close to any heat source, you know, uh, imaging systems have to be able to withstand the contractions and expansions of the different materials when exposed to that. Fascinating. Yeah. Ben, I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> How do you make all this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, with simple vibe and shock, um, one of the methods that you can do um, to ruggedize a lens in that regard um, is basically adhere all the lens elements in place. Uh, whereas with a traditional imaging lens, you know, you have a series of uh, threaded parts, O-rings that are all held in place um, just through mechanical um, Tightness. Yes, yeah, just, yeah. Through, just through tightness, okay. friction. And so oftentimes, you know, under those conditions, like on a factory line where there's, you know, large amounts of vibrations or on different machines, automated parts, um, you know, you can have lens elements within your system actually uh, deviate from their desired position. Huh. And as a result of that, your imaging quality can suffer. So ruggedized lenses are basically, um, they are adhered lens elements within the body to ensure that that doesn't happen and that your imaging performance stays relatively consistent um, as they're getting moved about. Definitely. And one extra thing I'll add is that all the mechanics are simplified. So when normally you'd have a focus ring that you adjust, instead that's just a fixed steel clamp that's locked down. All the moving parts are taken out, so less things will be messed up during the shock and vibration. Okay. So there's a lot of different applications, a lot of different uses. Are there, are there different types of ruggedization? How does that work? For sure. So uh, Ben was talking about, you know, shock and vibration, and we hinted at some other ones like the athermalization yes. for space-grade optics before, but also protection from moisture and humidity. So certain uh, systems, you may not even care about the shock and vibration, but you're going to be underwater or exposed to, you know, spray. So you need to have the whole system sealed so that moisture can't get in there and mess with the whole system. Yeah. Which is actually, yeah, it, it's pretty exciting. We just recently released uh, some of our CW series lenses, which are waterproof lenses. And they, I believe one of the um, uh, specifications we have for those are IPX7, uh, which means that they can survive, or, or rather they're tested for um, within a meter of uh, depth in, in water uh, for 30 minutes. Um, and basically the the mechanical body is ensuring that during the time period that that lens is held underwater, um, no water is making its way into the lens elements, disturbing any of the placements um, or getting trapped inside of the body. So um, those have recently been added to our catalog within the last year and a half, I want to say. Um, and those are a very exciting uh, part that we actually have over here and we'll, we'll get to in a second. On this shaking table over here, we have a bunch of those shock and vibe ruggedized lenses. 
So these are the ones where, as they're shaken around, they maintain pointing stability. So if they're looking at a spot on an object, that same point will be mapped to the same spot on the image sensor. Uh, if it was a normal lens, it could shift pixels around there, which could mess with calibrated imaging systems or other devices. So this is just a demonstration. You can even see here, I talked about that steel, well, actually, you probably mentioned the steel clamping ring around the ruggedized lenses. That's instead of the normal focus ring that you would adjust. Yes. That's so you can get some uh, tighter connection with uh, the C-mount camera that it's going to be added to. Um, you know, these are going to be vibrating here all day, um, and they're going to be working just as well as they were right before we uh, set up this demo. So, yes. um, and then we got a. It looks like we got a waterproof uh, imaging lens over here. Yep. And so that one is the CW series that Ben mentioned earlier, the waterproof lens. And it's actually both a waterproof lens and camera. This camera is made by Lucid Vision. So when it's all attached, it's rated to be in the water without any moisture getting in there. You can see our little friend floating around here, this astronaut in the tank as well. Uh, but yeah, it can still perform, image correctly inside of water, or even if you're not in the water, but you're exposed to splashes of fog or spray in some kind of uh, harsh environment. So just to be clear, these do not work five miles under the sea. Oh, we haven't tested them for that. We're not entirely sure. Yeah, as Ben mentioned earlier, they're tested for, you know, a meter deep, I yep. believe, yes. during the testing. But who knows? Maybe they'll work on your submarine. We, we still need to verify that. Thank you for walking us through that. And thank you for your time. I know you're busy. We Customers are, are walking all over. Um, this was very informative. So, so thank you. So how could everybody watching learn more? Well, to learn more about different types of ruggedization, how it works, uh, you can visit our Knowledge Center on our website, as well as all other topics, uh, optics, and imaging. As it's in our own best interest to keep people informed, so we create a lot of free resources, web pages, articles, videos, all those types of things on optical concepts. Perfect. And if you're interested in learning any more about our products or our capabilities, you know, feel free to meet us online, chat with us on uh, live chat, you know, give us a call. We have engineers ready, standing by, wanting to hear you and your application. and. Um, you know, we're, we're ready to help you get there. Great. Well, thank you, Corey. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on our next uh, edition of Light Talk. All right. Bye. Bye.